This is quite an interesting zone here. You have a schistos rock and you can see how much oxidation is on it. There's little stringers of pyrite all throughout the schists. And uh, this zone is pretty substantial. You can see the bedrock is also exposed on the floor of the road here. Going down over the edge, down that way, there's actually an added struck that goes in about 20 meters, runs along the bottom of this and ends about right here. So this is more or less the start of the zone and uh, they struck it that way. So didn't really intersect any of this up here. Th this zone does continue down to where just number two is. Uh, it's just not as visible as right here. So the zone continues up here. And as you can see, you have some really stained bedrock here. And this continues for another 20 meters around this corner. And you can see stringers like that of iron sulfides, which are mostly iron pyrite with minor chalcopyrite. Some nice big oxidized areas like this. And here you have a quartz vein that's about 50 centimeters wide from here over to here. This continues here, branches off here. And uh, we did a little bit of digging there to, to locate it. And it is actually right there. So this zone is not crazy mineralized at surface, but you can definitely tell all these areas where there's heavy oxidation have stringers and disseminations of iron pyrite. Up there, there's an old logging road. This is actually exposed on there too. And then we have found this farther up, another 100 meters, in an outcrop that's uh, been recently exposed. So, a pretty large zone. This area also has a, an EM anomaly, electromagnetic anomaly, in this area. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull a couple samples off here and see if there's anything that's uh, worthwhile to sample. You can see the quartz again there, more quartz there. So there's sp sporadic quartz veining throughout this. See there's quartz right there. So the quartz vein right in the corner there is the one we just looked at. If you go around the corner a bit more, you have a continuation of your oxidation zone. And again, iron sulfide stringers and a schistose rock. So just around the corner a bit farther, your zone continues. And you can see the obvious iron sulfides here, this gray stuff, iron pyrite. Basically any area where you see this stuff, you'll see a stringer of iron sulfides. And that's mostly pyrite with varying amounts of other minerals, more pyrite. Ten meters farther up. So this is a pretty substantial size zone with varying stringer zones throughout your schistos body. So here's another area right here. 
that's heavily oxidized down here. Probably the most visible amount of uh, sulfides you can see here. And if you look at this mineral under the loop, you see a bit of uh, sphalerite in there and a little bit of chalcopyrite. So it's got some copper and zinc values. And this vein right here is about from here to here. And this is actually quartz uh, with intrusions of schist and mica in there. So that's uh, this zone right here, and then your rock type changes at this little creek here. So we think there's a contact in there, but definitely a worthwhile pursuit, in my opinion, based on the size of this zone, as well as some of the mineralization seen, possibly at depth. Could get substantial. Anyways, that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed the short little video. And what I'm gonna do is put a assay result from a sample we chipped out from right here. And that'll be up here. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.